Rise and shine to Sunshine Radio 96.7, Saturday mornings. This is Voice from Veterans and the rest of us who say we support veterans too. News, commentary, information, education, music, and entertainment. New just for you, 96.7. Now, you've heard the rest. Stay tuned for the best. Rise and shine to Sunshine Radio and stay with us all day long. Good Saturday morning, everyone. This is Tim, the airman, coming to you this week. Keith, the boss of the beach, is on the road working on some upcoming veterans events. I will start with a quick introduction of myself and my background. I served in the U.S. Air Force from 1992 to 1995. During basic, I ripped up my ankle four weeks into training but I was able to finish training with my flight and went on to serve in the 319th Communication Squadron in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Big change in climate for a Florida boy. 90s in the summer and negative 50 with wind chill in the winter. My job was a missile radio technician. We worked on the communications equipment in support of the Minuteman 3 ICBM. I never saw war because I went in right after the Gulf War. When I got out, it was during the military downsizing of 1995. I stayed in long enough to earn my full VA benefits and GI Bill. But that injury and basic made it hard to function. When I got out, there wasn't much help for veterans, either through the state or the VA. The VA turned me away for a few years, and the state refused to give me any unemployment. I felt lost. I struggled for several months to, to find a job. My marriage was on the verge of collapse. So like many veterans, I fell into a depression. I got, I got to a pretty low point with alcohol and anger. I finally got a job running a warehouse for a computer company in Tampa. The owner was an Air Force vet, and he gave me a chance. Sometimes that's all it takes to put you on the right path. What a blessing. After a while, I wanted to use my technical skills to build computers, so the technician there taught me how to build computers. I then started a small business with my father building computers. But, timing being what it was, Big box stores came in to Tampa, and we could not compete. After a little while, I went to work for Lucent, installing voice and data lines and phone systems. The pay wasn't great, but it was a job. Then fate happened. I got a job at a local telephone company, and it changed my life. Double the pay and great benefits. I worked there 14 years till those old injuries just wore my body down. I went back to the VA, and this time, the service was a lot better. And with the info I found on the Internet, I went from 10% rating to 80% disability rating over a few years. This taught me I had to fight to get the benefits I deserved. This made me want to help others and cut the VA red tape. And that is why I help WVETOnlineRadio.com and Voice for Veterans. We have added many web sources and phone numbers to our resources page. No vet that served honorably should have to come home and fight for help. This is the mission of Voice for Veterans and several other VSOs. I found out that VSO is a veteran service organization. The other thing I'd like to talk about real quick is when you have the GI Bill or any of the other um, education grants that you get through the uh, military, through for your military service, make sure you use them. I waited until I could afford to go to school, and then it was too late. So out of the $12,000 that I was supposed to get, 
I timed out and only wound up getting $180, which was far less than what I put in to be able to use the GI Bill. So don't wait. If you have a way of going, go to school. It's the best thing you can do for your future, for your family. All right, with that being said, um, I want to talk about the veterans that are coming home from the war in Afghanistan. We need to show them the utmost respect. For 20 years, they volunteered. It's not like Vietnam or the wars before Vietnam when there was a draft and you didn't have a choice. These veterans had a choice. Some of them sacrificed relationships, sacrificed of themselves um, and blood, sweat, mental anguish. They saw things that nobody should have to see. The old saying, war is hell, is true. The veterans that I've talked to and I've watched a lot of videos online, um, they're talking about the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Some are positive about it. Yes, great, fine, the war is over after 20 long years. The longest war that the United States of America has ever been in. However, a lot of veterans and a lot of people that are paying attention are quite frustrated with the way it ended. Military planning, you know, um, wasn't what it could have been. It, you know, there were definite missteps, and now the Taliban, our old enemy, is in charge of Afghanistan. We saw 13 of our troops massacred during the bombing at Kabul. Also, I believe it was like 200 Afghanis were injured as well. There was another way that this could have went down, and it may have been safer, may not have. We have the fortunate advantage of being armchair quarterbacks in this. We can't predict exactly what's going to happen, but our military leaders on up to the president could have put a little bit more thought into the withdrawal. This is my opinion. It's the opinion of many, many, many people. Doesn't mean it's absolutely right. I don't, I don't, when it comes to opinions, I don't say I'm right, you're wrong. It's just the loss that we suffered were, was just too much. We have lost, I believe they said, $80 billion in taxpayer money, $80 billion of equipment. A lot of the equipment are we destroyed on the way out, which, you know, that happens especially when you do a quick withdrawal. It, there's a lot of logistics in moving Humvees and Apaches and Blackhawks and whatever else, whatever other equipment is out there. We did destroy a lot of our stuff on the way out, so it couldn't be used. But also, the Taliban has gotten use of active equipment. Some equipment, from what I understand, like Black Hawk helicopters, have top secret classified equipment in them. We left this stuff for the Afghani forces to use against the Taliban. Well, as soon as we withdrew from this base and that base throughout the country, the Taliban came in and the Afghanis, you know, didn't put up much of a fight. 
Some of them did, but from what I understand, most of them didn't, and they surrendered to the Taliban. Now, the Taliban has this equipment, and I pray that it's not used against any American or any of our allies or any of the families of the people that helped us fight the Taliban over the past 20 years. We went to war because of 9-11. The Taliban was part of 9-11. And now they're saying, oh, well, it's a kinder, gentler Taliban. They're trying to rebrand themselves. They're fighting what they're calling ISIS-K. However, the Taliban is a ruthless, ruthless group. And because of their beliefs, you know, they have brought back Sharia law. They have little to no respect for women. And after 20 years of progress there, we had helped the women of Afghanistan, the little girls, go back to school. We helped give the women of Afghanistan rights, rights that they never would have had. Now that we're gone, the Taliban is stripping those rights. They've gone back to their old ways. At the same time, the political part of the Taliban is trying to put on a nice shiny face to the world stage. We have to pay attention, folks. We have to follow the news. We have to look for other sources than just mainstream news. But we also have to fact check. We have to fact check the mainstream news. We have to fact check what we hear on independent stations, on in independent Internet radio stations, independent FM, AM stations, do your research. Stay involved. Understand. Contact your congressmen, your senators. Write a letter to the president if you don't feel that this is right. Now, the veterans coming home, they need help. A lot of them have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. In the old days, like Keith would say, they would call it shell shock. Well, it doesn't have to be from an explosion or getting shot. It's things that you see. It can be frustration from, you know, spending all this time in a war being told, we're there fighting for this. We're there fighting for that. And then we come home and we just abandon some of our friends, some of our allies that had helped us, the interpreters that risked their life, risked their family's lives. Those people need to, the people that helped us, they need to come back to America or another friendly country. They need to get out of there. And America needs to help get them out. The State Department has said it's been the greatest airlift in history, bigger than Vietnam. And yes, that part is true. However, we left people behind. State Department has, from what I've been reading and seeing, hindered some of the returns. Independent companies, veterans, have gone back and done rescue missions to try to rescue the people that helped us, to try to rescue Americans left in Afghanistan. Veterans are a strange breed, a unique breed. We go, we do what we're told, we try to do it to the best of our ability, whether we agree with everything we're told to do or not. But we do it. We get it done. So when we get back, we deserve the help that we need. Just like I deserved the help when I got home. It took a while. 
nowadays. The VA's gotten better. There's more and more VSOs. There's more podcasts. There's more everything. Veterans are patriotic to the core. Some of them are disgruntled. Some of them with that PTSD, you know, might be angry. They they have a right to be angry, but they deserve help, whether it be through a VSO helping them or the VA helping them, politicians stepping in and helping. You know, we, we send politicians to the state capitol. We send them to Washington to serve our needs. A lot of them forget that. A lot of them, you know, just want to go up there and party and make rules for themselves and different rules for everybody else. We have to stay on top of things. We have to understand it is our duty as American citizens, it's our duty as veterans, to work together to stop the 22-plus-a-day suicides by veterans. That's over 8,000 veterans' deaths by suicide a year. That is insane. Each year, more veterans die than the total deaths of American forces in the 20 years of the Afghanistan and Iraqi wars. It's insane. If you know a veteran, please talk to them. Find out what's going on. A lot of them don't want to talk about it. A lot of them won't talk about it, but you can tell. You know, they'll be distant, they'll be frustrated, they'll lash out. But it's our duty as American citizens to help these vets. You can go online and find information for them. Bring it to them. Say, hey, Johnny, I I noticed you've been having some anger issues. Um... I want to be there for you. I'll go I'll go with you to VFWs, to AMVETS, to the VA, whatever it takes to get you better. We need to stick together for the betterment of our community and for the veterans. Now, I'm sorry, I've gone a little bit long in this segment. I'll be back in a couple minutes. I'm going to play a song. And then we'll um, finish up the show. I appreciate your time um, that you're allowing me to talk. Uh, Normally I wouldn't do something like this because I hate talking on the microphone. More of a behind-the-scenes tech geek. But um, I figured it was an important thing to say. Um, So we'll be back in a couple minutes. Please stay tuned. And God bless you. We'll be right back. American Veterans Alliance, WVET, online radio.com. Yeah. 
passion, the groove, the melody. All right, folks, we're back. That song was called Thank You. It was written by a band that I'm close friends with, Mr. Grumpy. They've recently changed their name to Engine Zero. But the reason why I played that song is I want to thank all the vets, all the veterans' families, all the organizations that help veterans. That song was written by two veterans, Mr. Wade Foskey, and Mr. Wes Pang. Now, the song talks about music. I'm really into music. But, again, I think it was the best song that I could play to try to thank everybody that helps veterans. All right, we're back with Voice for Veterans. There's events coming up. Not just some Veterans Day. There's events Almost every weekend, you just have to look for them. You can Google it. You can go on Facebook. You, you know, there's online sources for this stuff. These events help raise money for fallen soldiers, for wounded warriors, for the families of veterans. It could be tunnels for towers. It could be wounded warriors. A lot of the events are held here locally. Could be biker events where they do runs, poker runs, to raise money. They have live music. They have barbecues. And those are a lot of fun, a lot of camaraderie. A lot of veterans are in the biker community. And we salute those vets that get out there and they still live their lives. The organizations that put on these events, they need your help. They need you to go. They need you to, I don't know, uh, donate for the raffles, the 50-50s, whatever. Or just throw money in the bucket. You know, anything that you can do that can help makes a difference. Every time the biker community gets together, for something like this, they raise a lot of money for our veterans. We need to be supportive of them. You might make new friends. You might find a band that you absolutely love. I know a lot of local bands. You know, it, it, it could be Greg Billings. It could be Soul Circus Cowboys. It could be anybody. Virginia Rose Band. All of these bands donate their time for the most part, and perform. You know, try to keep it entertaining. There's DJs out there that work hard, sound companies, and I want to give a shout-out to them. 
the people that make the events happen. Now, they make the events happen, but you make the events work. What I want you to do in your free time is look into it. You know, we've already discussed where to find the information. Just search for it. Go out there and search. Be a part of the community. Have some fun. Get some barbecue. Buy some raffles. Whatever. You know, auction items. Auction items bring in a lot of money for the community. There's a big event that's going to be coming up. The guys at OCC, Orange County Choppers, you know, they're now part of our Clearwater community. And they're really big into helping veterans. Keep an eye on them. You know, they they have events coming on. And it's not just Veterans Day. It's all the time. And we need to do that. Don't just think of veterans and military families on the holidays, on July 4th, on Memorial Day, on Veterans Day. Day. You know, don't be a patriot on those days. Don't just be a patriot on those days. Be a patriot every day. Talk to your family about it. I have a lot of military members in my family. Now, we weren't raised strict military, you know, base-to-base type thing. But my sister Debbie and her husband Mike both retired from the Navy. And they're doing great. My brother-in-law, Frank, he served several years in the Army, working on the Patriot Missile System. He got out, he moved on with his life, and his son, Christian, so proud of Christian. He went into the Army, and he's doing the same job his dad did. He's in the Patriot System, and he's learning other defense systems. He's going to college while he's in the military, which I... I really wish I would have done that. Would have made my life a lot easier. But he's a fast tracker. You know, he goes in and he had some college credits, stuff like that. So got a little bit of rank from that. But he does what he's supposed to do. And he does it better than almost anybody in his division. So he's been promoted. He's, you know. He's, I think it's a staff sergeant, but five years now, I think. He's up to staff sergeant, and he's getting ready to test again, and he's just kicking butt. And I salute him uh, for the determination. Yes, he still has fun. You're allowed to have fun when you're in the military. My problem is I had too much fun. Anyways, so let's shout out to Christian, the rest of my family members, and anybody else that has ever served who has ever stepped up and answered the call. And we can't forget the family members that are left behind, the moms that have to raise the kids, or sometimes the dads when The wives are in the military and they get deployed. Voice for Vets cares about all these veterans. And we hope you care about the veterans. Okay, guys. We're coming to the end of the show. And I just want to thank you again for listening. I hope I brought some information to you. Uh, I know I brought you some opinions. And, you know, again... Everybody's entitled to their opinions, but don't be afraid to listen to other people's opinions as well. You know, you might learn something. You might find some common ground. Are looking forward to having Keith back in the studio. You know, Voice for Vet is heard on 96.7 Sunshine Radio, Radio St. Pete. We'll be back on Thursday. I'm signing off. This is Tim the Airman, Voice for Veterans, WVET Online Radio dot com